Today I'm making a cocktail worthy of the red carpet by combining scotch, cognac, sweet Italian vermouth, amaretto, and sparkling wine to tell the story of a Hollywood starlet who also happened to be a genius. Do you have a secret talent? A skill no one knows about? What if your brilliance was dismissed because no one believed you? And what if your gift could save lives, but no one would listen? Welcome to the bar, where we make superstar cocktails inspired by history. The drink I'm making for you today is called Ahead of the Rest, which is inspired by Hedy Lamarr, who is considered to be one of the most beautiful women in Hollywood history and whose invention changed the way we live our lives even today. Hedy Lamarr's life was like any good Hollywood blockbuster, with mystery, danger, intrigue, secrets, and world acclaim. But where did it all start? Hedwig Eva Marie Kiesler was born in Vienna, Austria in 1914. She was a bright and inquisitive child. She loved to tinker, like taking apart her music boxes to see how they worked. She was also headstrong. As a teen, she forged permission slips so that she could audition at some of the local film studios. A few years later, as a young adult, she moved to Berlin so that she could audition at some of the bigger film studios as Berlin was one of the premier film towns in the world. It's hard to get your first job, isn't it? You go to school, you get your degree, you send out your resume, and you're lucky if the company even gives you an interview. You're ghosted by most of these companies before you even get a chance. You don't have enough experience, they say, but you can't get any experience without a job. So you don't give up, you can't. So you keep trying until somebody finally gives you a chance. Someone values your potential. And that's what happened with Hetty. With her looks and smarts, she finally got cast in a Czech film called Ecstasy. And her first film would change her life. Upon its release, Ecstasy immediately caused a scandal due to the sexual content in the film. Even Hetty's parents walked out of the theater upon seeing their daughter's nudity and performance. Shocked by the uproar, Hetty moved back to Vienna to figure out her next move. She thought she made all the right decisions. It would take both her looks and her smarts to find a way out. And it's that delicate balance between her beauty and her brain that inspired our first ingredient, cognac. Now this is a De Vucini collection cognac. It's a fine cognac. Uh, one of my favorites actually that I've had, not that I've had many cognacs in my day, but one thing that I really like about it is that it has a tremendous balance between uh, the alcohol content and the, the, the higher alcohol uh, percentage that you have, but also the fruitiness and the brightness of it. And I feel like that that's also representative in the delicate balance between the punch of Hetty's brain and also the fine fine taste of Hetty's beauty. So for our particular cocktail, we are going to put in a half ounce of cognac and we're going to pour this right in to our glass. Hetty left Vienna and she went to London at the same time that MGM mogul Louis B. Mayer was there. Hetty saw her chance. The same man who discovered Greta Garbo was in her sights. She was determined to become his next great starlet. Only there was one problem. Mr. Mayer had seen ecstasy and he wasn't impressed. And he was leaving to go back to America on a French ocean liner, leaving both London and Hetty behind. Hetty was determined to change her fortune. She also purchased a one-way ticket on the same ocean liner and spent the next few weeks dressed to the nines and strategically placing herself in the same vicinity as Mr. Mayer. 
She also changed her name from Hedvig Kiesler to Hedy Lamar. And by the time that they reached America, Mr. Mayer's opinion of her had softened. And she had signed a contract with him. And it's the connection to the United Kingdom, where Hetty first met Mr. Louis B. Mayer, that inspired our next ingredient, scotch. Now what I have here is Duncan Taylor, a blended scotch whiskey. So it's not perhaps one of the more expensive whiskeys that you may find like a Macallan's or perhaps a Glenfiddich, but it is a very nice, solid, base whiskey. And one of the things I really like for this is that it does well mixing with other drinks because it doesn't have an overly bold, woody flavor and therefore I think plays well with the other ingredients in our drink. And since we have our English connection and we want that to also elevate the, the prestige of the drink, right? We have cognac and scotch. This is gonna be quite decadent. I think that it is appropriate to use this particular blended scotch because it's gonna play nice with the other flavors. For our drink, we're going to put in one ounce of Duncan Taylor. Pour that on it. Hetty arrived in Hollywood in 1937. With her new contract in place, she practiced her English at glitzy Hollywood parties in the arms of playboys like Howard Hughes. While they dated, Hughes, an aviation genius, was impressed with Hetty's smarts. In her free time, she would study birds and fish to design new wings for his planes. When appearing in her first Hollywood film, Algiers, released in 1938, it was said that the audience gasped at her beauty the moment that she appeared on screen. In 1939, she starred in Lady of the Tropics, earning her the title of the most beautiful woman in the world. With her mistakes in Berlin a distant memory, her star was quickly rising. But her connections to Germany continued to haunt her. Hitler's rise put her Jewish mother's life in jeopardy. So Hetty saved her money and brought her only living parent home to safety in America. Hetty's Hollywood career was legendary. Over the next 20 years, she appeared in 27 films, including Cecil B. DeMille's Samson and Delilah, Tortilla Flat with Spencer Tracy, My Favorite Spy with Bob Hope, and H.M. Pullum Esquire with Robert Young. She had conquered filmdom from Vienna, Austria to Hollywood, California. And it's the connection between the Alps, which run through Europe, and the San Gabriel Mountains above the California Basin that inspires our next ingredient, sweet Italian vermouth. Now I'm using Gallo sweet Italian vermouth, which is Italian only in so far as the type of vermouth that it, it's trying to act like. I mean, this is made in California. That's, that's essentially what I'm getting at, is that actually this winery, or at least Gallo, is based out of California. And it just seems so fitting that for the whole journey of Hedy Lamar to go from Vienna, Austria, in the Alps, all the way to California, right around the San Gabriel Mountains, it just seems fitting that we use sweet Italian vermouth, and Gallo is a perfect representation of that. Uh, it's nice, it's sweet. If you don't know what um, vermouth is, it tastes a lot like port. It's a fortified wine. It's a little bit sweeter, lower alcohol, but it's gonna do wonderful job of introducing some necessary sugar to our already pretty alcoholic and bold flavored uh, alcohols that we have in the scotch and the cognac already in our drink. So for our drink, we're gonna put in one ounce. Perfect. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of the Kardashians? <laughs> of course you have. What was the first thing that came to your mind? Their 20 year run on Keeping Up With The Kardashians? Their new show, The Kardashians? Their personal lives? Their looks? Their kids? Fame and beauty can hide a lot. And so a lot of people don't appreciate their business savvy. Kim is worth $1.7 billion. Kylie worth 680 million. The other three girls, Chloe, Kendall, and Courtney, Courtney, 
are worth 60 million each. They have smarts and looks, even if some of it's surgically inspired. But few people appreciate their intelligence. I mean, when was the last time that you heard Kim was a keynote speaker at a business conference? Because she was, but nobody cares. Their looks and fame can blind people to their other talents. Hetty suffered from the same bias. And, you know, my fans, all like three of you, look at my life and the glitz and glamour of being a mixologist, but they don't appreciate sometimes what it takes to be a well-read historian. It hurts. <laughs> hey, Humphrey, how's it going? Clark, happy to see you. Great movie you were in. Hi, how's it going? Hey, if you like our historically inspired cocktails, but don't like your taste buds to have to undergo all of the trial and error in order to achieve this greatness, or you just don't like reading books, then subscribe and let me do the work for you. Ingrid, lovely to see you. Please, please, next time, next time, I got you. Oh, stop. Hey, come here. You know, Hetty's life was full of glitz and fame. And though on the surface it looked like a Hollywood fairy tale, in reality it was more along the lines of a Shakespearean tragedy. She had multiple lovers, was married six times, including one of them being a Nazi sympathizer who supplied weapons to the Third Reich. <laughs> she had three kids, uncovered buried childhood trauma she had to go to therapy for, and when she had retired, the multimillionaire was caught for shoplifting twice. Few stories of Hollywood stardom end up as a fairy tale, but Hetty was more than just a bombshell. She was a patriot and a genius. During the war, upon hearing that US submarines were at risk because the Nazis could jam their signals, leaving them unable to target the U-boats, Hetty set off creating a new guidance system that utilized changing frequencies called frequency hopping. Needing help bringing her vision to fruition, Hetty teamed up with George Antheil, a musician who shared her inventive spirit. Astonishingly, they accomplished their task, even patenting their work in 1942. Unfortunately, the US military was skeptical of their solution and didn't use their invention. Undeterred, Hetty, knowing the dangers of Hitler's Third Reich, put all her efforts into supporting the sale of U.S. war bonds. As for her invention, the Navy didn't get around using it until the 1950s, after the patent had expired. Coincidence? I mean, Hetty and Enthiel's invention was brilliant in design, but clunky in execution, so Maybe the Navy had a point. What may surprise you is that you use Hetty's invention today and probably don't even know it. Frequency hopping is the basis for both cell phone connection and Wi-Fi. <laughs> Crazy, right? Hetty's beauty was obvious, but what was rarely appreciated was her genius. And that's what inspired our next ingredient in our cocktail, amaretto. Because a lot like Hetty Smarts, this little inclusion adds a bright spark to this drink and brings it so much body, so much depth and flavor that I think mirrors how much Hetty's brilliance mentally brought so much depth to her character individually. For our drink, we're gonna put in three quarters of an ounce. Now, of course, if you guys are unfamiliar with amaretto, it is an almond liqueur. It is sweet and delicious and one of my favorite things to use in cocktails ever. If you want things to taste wonderful, Add amaretto. If you want life to be wonderful, add some smarts, just like Hetty. Hetty's life was like a screenwriter's dream with all the elements for a blockbuster. Sex, war, intrigue, mistakes, heroism, and disappearing from the spotlight. But Hetty's legend, her life, lives on every time you connect to the internet because the most beautiful woman in the world could easily be called the mother of Wi-Fi. In 1997, Hetty and Enthiel were honored with the Electronic Frontier Foundation's Pioneer Award. That same year, 
She also became the first female to receive the Bulby Nass Spirit of Achievement Award, considered the Oscars of inventing. Hedy eventually died in 2000 at the age of 86 in a suburb of Orlando, Florida. She used her beauty to advance her career and her mind to try to save lives. Hedy Lamar was both a Hollywood icon and a genius. Hedy Lamar's name deserves to be on a scientific building, but she also deserves to have a drink named after her. And since I don't have a building and all I have is alcohol, let's see about her drink. So since our drink has so many alcoholic elements and no juices or massive sweeteners, I think it's best for us to make this a stirred drink as opposed to a shaken drink. Because when you put in a shaken drink, uh, you're not only going to dilute the alcohol a lot quicker, you're also going to introduce a lot of air to it. And I don't think that we need a lot of air with our base ingredients here. I do want to dilute it a bit and I definitely want to chill down the drink, which is why I included the ice but I don't wanna add that extra air. I don't want this to be foamy in any way or flat um, or too watered down. We just wanna wake all the ingredients up, get them to know each other and also chill it all down at the same time. So now that that's all done, I'm gonna put in my strainer and we will pour. Perfect. Now, our last ingredient in this otherwise beautiful and decadent drink is sparkling wine because it's the connection of Hetty's career in Hollywood, the glitz, the glamour, the champagne. You know, you imagine like, you know, the great Gatsby with Leonardo DiCaprio with his, you know, that shot uh, kind of inspired with the class there. But also like when you look at those old Hollywood movies, you know, and they're, they're drinking champagne. I can't help but think of that with Hedy Lamarr, her glitzy parties, learning English, and her entire life was around something along the same line. So for that, I'm adding Sanren Brut. It's a beautiful, light, very flowery, dry, uh, uh, sparkling wine. And I think it's gonna do a great job just to top off our cocktail and finish out our drink. Perfect. Now, if you like yours a little bit drier, you can always add some more. If you want a little bit sweeter, you add a little less, but we've topped it off beautifully. And there you have ahead of the rest. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it looks smart. Let's see if it matches the legacy, the beauty, and the complexity of the woman who inspired it. Let's give it a taste. First off, I love the color of this. It's absolutely stunning. Um, if you have especially fresh uh, uh, sparkling wine, it'll tend to bubble with a, a certain amount of consistency. So you'll still have like that, the sparkling uh, effect of it, uh, which will be very similar to champagne. So that's a nice added touch smell immediately you get that amaretto it's so warm and inviting it's such a small ingredient in here too but there's a brightness from the cognac and a slight woodiness from the scotch this is one of my favorite cocktails guys it's beautiful it's delicious it's not cheap i won't lie we're adding cognac and scotch together, and then we're mixing it up with champagne at the end. So there's a lot of big ingredients here. Now, mind you, you don't have to get the most expensive things to make this drink. It is absolutely delightful, though. The ever so nice, woody, smooth texture of that scotch, the beautiful cognac that, that brightens everything up, that adds a little extra fruit, the nuttiness of the amaretto with its necessary sweetness, that combined with the, uh, the vermouth, the vermouth and the cognac are just like, they're two partners and they're dancing with the ever so bold uh, Duncan Tyler Scotch, Duncan Taylor Scotch. Um, and then of course, it all just comes together so nicely with our sparkling wine. It brightens everything up. It's like adding the music to the dance at that end, right? You feel it playing around, the popping bubbles in your mouth. It, texturally from uh, the mouthfeel, it's delightful. This is an excellent, well-balanced, beautiful, bright drink. It's decadent, it's Hollywood, it is smart. 
and I think it is certainly worthy of the mother of Wi-Fi, the beautiful, the genius, Hedy Lamar. So, for Hedy Lamar and all the female geniuses that continue to impact our world today, this drink is for you. Cheers, because you know, history is better with a drink. <laughs>